Good morning. Um, you're going to see uh, a group of videos today, again, as usual, right? Let's pam it together. So uh, yesterday, I don't think I did a morning intro, but yesterday we went to the airport to get our tests. Well, we tested in the morning at the house because United Airlines gives you a test that you can mail in. But we weren't completely secure in the fact that it would be done in time. So we also did a backup expensive test at the airport, $150 each to do a 24 hour PCR test in a tent in the front drive to the airport, which is bizarre. And given that we were, we did all this on 9-11, it was very weird to think back to the time when you couldn't even drive up to the front of the airport and now we're all milling about and driving up to the airport. So that was a bit odd, but it went smooth and it was fine. I'm not super thrilled about the 150 bucks, but I'm a cheapskate when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and then, um, and then I went and got my booster immunization. I have, I have MCAS. I, I think I've talked about it before. It's basically, I'm allergic to most things, a lot of things. And so I take a regime of medication to keep my mast cells down and to stop me from overreacting to everything. And I went like, I don't know, two years when nobody knew what it was. I was in pain all the time. It wasn't super happy. It wasn't a super happy time. I spent a lot of time in bed. And um, so when they finally figured it out and I went on this regime, it was great, wonderful. Like I take um, over-the-counter anti-allergy meds. I take some prescription anti-allergy meds. And then I have this ratchet up level where I take two additional allergy meds if I'm really just out of control. And they're the ones I, I drop down those because they're the ones that are the most pain in the backside to take. But it means I'm immunosuppressed because like right on the bottle of a few of these things, it says, you know, be cautious, you will be immunosuppressed. So I qualified for the booster and, you know, we're worried and we're taking this trip to the UK and blah, blah, blah. So, um, I went and got my booster. It still hurts. My arm still hurts. It hurts. I am, if you'll notice my beautiful gray ensemble. It's a heating pad and I've got it flapped over here on my arm where the shot went in so that, it, so that it feels better. I'm also getting, cause it's a little nippy out today. I also get a back warmer. I do love the seat warmers and this is almost as good. Anyway, after that rigmarole on Tuesday, we fly to the UK and I think I talked about, I will talk about that cause you're going to see it later on the uh, video where we're standing outside the testing center. But um, I'm also going to give you a bit this morning. I just put my needle down. Uh, show you a bit of what I'm doing this morning, which is um, sewing up the cowl that you saw me working on when we drove to LA. And um, I'll give you a bit of just brief because I don't have the stand up on the camera. I'm, it, by my, my poor sore, sore arm is my camera holding arm. I'm going to show you how to do just simple, how to sew end to end knitwear together. And I'm going to flip this around and show you what I've done so far. And then I have to do some ripping back and I'll show you why here in just a sec. All right. So on here is the seam right here, right along here is the seam and you can see it. I'm not intending that you don't. I'll show you the backside. It gives you a little ridge. I try to do this seam as close to the edge as I can. But remember, Eileen started this and I finished it. I am um, Eileen. Well, Eileen had a really loose cast on, so, um, but we had to do a pretty loose bind off to make sure this didn't tighten up. So it is a bit rough at times to decide what I'm supposed to be stitching to. Um, I started here with garter stitch. Let's get that away for you a bit. I started with garter stitch and that is just, I'll show you here in a second, but you just go around, you'd put a collar around each stitch and go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But we went along and the things that I need to be careful with this is I need these sections to line up. So I need the leaves to line up end to end. I need this little cable thing. Here is not such a big deal, but here, these this, the center of this triangle needs to line up to the point of this triangle. And I hit that one, but look here. Oh no, this is the one I didn't hit. I hit this one, fine. This one lined up quite well. And then I got my leaf fine, but here I'm off. I didn't hit the center. So I'm going to tear my work back and it's not hard. It's just a, it, every stitch collar gets this thing. I'm going to take it back. Now, unfortunately I missed here, but I got my leaf lined up. So I'm going to have to do a little stretching. 
Sometimes you may have to skip over a stitch to get the two items lined up. And I'm going to take that back um, and then I will cut in and show you how I'm connecting these things. How I join the end of a knit stitch to the end of a knit stitch. And then how I'm joining a, the end of a, gar of a purl stitch to the end of a purl stitch. I'll show you both those things. And then this is a knit three together or, um, yeah, a knit three together or it's not actually. It's a slip two, knit one, pass the two over. I'll show you how I join that one together. And, um, and then I'll show you how I finish this off. Because there's like a, I do a figure eight at the beginning and the end just to give it a smooth, smoothish edge. And then what I'm going to do then is I will take this upstairs and steam it. Um, remember I showed you yesterday that I had folded this to block it? Well, here is here is the fold line. There is none. You can see a little bit of, well, there it is. There's my fold line. So when I go up to, to steam my, uh, I don't even, there you can see it. It's just a little ripply. There's not a line per se. It's just little ripples where I think actually when I pinned it, it pulled out a little bit. But I'm going to steam that, and I'll steam the seam that I've just that I'm just completing right here, and then I will take it up and block it, and I'll show you how I steam this thing, and then uh, it'll be ready to deliver before I leave to its owner. So when sewing, when I sew together anyway, I put right sides up, and everybody I've talked to or listened to suggests the same, and my last stitch was around a pair of the knit stitch. So, and I've got the video in my hand, so this is going to be a tough one. There, I went around that. And now I've counted in, I ripped it back to the place that was a little bit off. And I've counted in, there are eight stitches along this triangle. And I'm trying to meet with this point. So, I went in four, and I'm going to go around the collar right there. So, around there, let me see if I can get that to focus. Right around that collar, so those the two legs of my knit stitch. And I'm going to go around that. I can only do this one-handed, so I've got to brace it around that. And then I'm going to go down to the fourth stitch in from the top side of the triangle. Let's see if I can get that to focus. And of course, I have to look at the knitting and hold you and have you looking at the knitting at the same time. And so it's going to go around here. And I try to go around the knit stitch that is as close to the edge as I can get it. So there is no knit stitch closer to that edge. Right there. It, of course it refocuses on my hand. So I've gone around those two, or the two legs of the knit stitch below. I'm going to pull it. There. And then it'll, it will be just back and forth and back and forth until... Now this one I gotta look a little harder because I don't want to go up there. That's a level above. So I've gotta go right down in here. Oh, actually, no, my next stitch should be there on the other side of the yarn over. So there's that one. Because we don't want to pull that point off. There, now <clears throat> now I'm in the middle. I fixed that problem. But now the trick is is that I have to hit this stitch. Let's see if we can get that there. But I also have to line up to my leaf stitch. And so I'm going to keep easing that in. I think because this has got really loose gauge right here. I, if I have to stitch, skip over one of the stitches, it's not going to show when this is sewn together. So we're going to go to this one next. I've done the top one. So now I'm going to go down below and get the next one along, which is that one. Not easy to do, and then of course the focus always goes off to my hand when I put it in front of the camera. That's those two legs, up and over. And of course I'd be holding this much tighter if I was using two hands. There. And then up above to the next one along. I've already done the first, I've already done the first row, so now I'm going to do the second row in this sequence. As far down close to the edge as I can get. There. The first knit row before the bind off edge. There. Two legs captured. Pull it tight. Not too tight. You, you just want to be gentle. 
A lot of people, when they're unhappy with their finished work, it's because they're pulling these stitches too tight. We're not sewing like on fabric here. Just no tighter than the gauge of your knitting. So there. And then I'm going to keep doing this, and then I'll show you when I get into the um, purl stitches. All right, so now we're going to attach two purls. And I've come out from my last knit, sh knit stitch. And I'm going to go down, catching the closest one to the edge up and I'm going to go over that pearl bump. Over the pearl bump and then back up again under that pearl bump right there. Right there. And then over to the other side and do the same, trying to line these up. So I've got to kind of keep an eye out because I want that to line up with that, the tip of the leaf to the base of the leaf. Pull it tight a little bit, and then I'm going to hit this one and go around to the next one. There. And the key is just to pull it tight enough so you don't really see it. Keep aiming. There's that. There we go, and now we're lined up at the tip to tip. So we've got the tip of the leaf and the tip of the stem. I'm gonna go around this knit stitch right there and go down the two legs and then go back down and get the tip of the knit stitch or where I do knit three together, right there. That one will be a single one. There, and I've lined them up. And then all I do is go through the purl stitches, another set of knit stitches, and then back into this garter stitch. And I will, like I started and you didn't see, I'll do a little figure eight all across the edge to finish it and hide my ends. And that will be it. This will be sewn together. I'll show you the next video where I steam everything and you can see it finished. Oh, and press the steam across that seam. And if you, you can probably hear it, it's very steamy. Very, very steamy. So it's injecting a lot of steaminess. And then look, you can barely see that seam, seam anymore, which is the key to, that's why I wanted to line that stuff up. So there we go, barely visible, barely visible. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this around and get to the fold line from when I blocked it. See the puckers? I'll lay that down, put my towel on it. And so you might ask why I don't just steam all my knits instead of wet blocking them. Well, there are several reasons. One, lace, and you want those laces to be, the lace holes to be pulled out and seen. But the other reason too is washing the oils off your hands off. And finally, the last is um, letting these stitches relax because no, we, we are not perfect knitters. And, um, we need to let our knitting even out, and it does even out in the water. All right, I'm gonna put this on and show you. This also works well as a snood, so you can put it up. You can also do a double wrap. Keep, make it a little more of a turtleneck. And you can still do the snood thing with a double wrapped, and you are nice and toasty warm. I might actually have to make one of these for myself now. Again, um, I will put the link to this pattern and yarn that you can get for it if you're interested in the shop. And you'll have all that info. Bye.